Estemenosuchus. Estemenosuchus is one of the most bizarre-looking prehistoric monsters. It belonged to the group of the Dinocephalians, and despite their dinosaur-like appearance, they were actually more closely related to mammals, including us. Estemenosuchus was the size of a rhinoceros, and it too had a horn on its nose, but it also had antler-like horns on the top of its head, and strange, bony protrusions coming out of its cheeks. No one knows what they were used for. It also had a set of monstrous, sharp teeth, but scientists aren't sure about its food preferences. Personally, I believe this thing was big and scary enough to eat anything it wanted. Fossil remains of Estemenosuchus have been found in Russia. It lived in the Permian period, long before the appearance of dinosaurs. Gigantopithecus. Its name says it all. It was a monstrous ape, closely related to the orangutan, that roamed the bamboo forests, jungles and mountains of China, India and Vietnam during the Pleistocene. It was a vegetarian, but scary nonetheless. It could grow up to 3 meters tall and weigh up to 550 kilograms. Its strength must have been extraordinary and probably kept it safe from most predators. It finally went extinct 300,000 years ago, possibly due to overhunting by early human species or as the result of climate change. Of course, all Yeti and Bigfoot believers like to think that Gigantopithecus survived somehow in the most remote parts of the Himalaya. Edestus. Today's great white shark probably has some of the most nightmarish set of teeth in nature, but its distant prehistoric relative Edestus was so scary that it would make the great white look almost cute. Edestus was about 7 meters long and was one of the top predators of the Carboniferous Seas. However, scientists still don't know how it used its extraordinary teeth. Instead of constantly losing the worn-out teeth and replacing them with the new ones growing in rows behind, as modern-day sharks do, Edestus didn't lose its teeth at all. Instead, the new teeth pushed the old teeth out of the mouth and, eventually, the gums and teeth would protrude out of the mouth like a pair of monstrous scissors. Regardless of how it did it, it seems obvious that Edestus could possibly cut any other creature in two with ease. But we still have trouble to imagine how a very old Edestus would function, or even how would it look. Terrorbird. Terrorbirds, formerly known as forest racids, were the top predators in South America and parts of North America during the Miocene, Pliocene, and early Pleistocene periods, before they were replaced by big cats and other carnivorous mammals. They were unable to fly but could run very fast, as fast as a cheetah, according to some scientists, and were very large. The largest species could grow up to three meters tall and weigh up to half a ton. Their main weapon was their head, which could be up to one meter long, allowing them to swallow prey as large as a dog in one single gulp. However, thanks to the hooked tip of the bill, similar to that of eagles and hawks, the terrorist birds could kill and devour prey much larger than a dog including horses, camels, etc. Metsoya. Metsoya would be the worst nightmare of anyone with a phobia of snakes. Although only fragmentary remains are known, it is claimed to have reached the immense length of 15 to 20 meters. This creature appeared in the Cretaceous period and possibly dined on dinosaurs. It was similar to today's boas and pythons in that it was not venomous, but rather squeezed its victims to death using its immense muscular strength. Metsoya was such a successful predator that it managed to survive the extinction that wiped out dinosaurs and other animals, but it finally went extinct about 45 million years ago. Other giant snakes are known to have existed, including one that was said to reach 29 meters in length. As Darkid. As Darkids were a kind of pterosaur, most popularly known as pterodactyls, which included the largest flying creatures ever to have existed. Some of them had wingspans of 12 to 15 meters, making them as large as a small plane, although they were obviously not as heavy. But what makes Asdarkids really strange are their body proportions. They had ridiculously long legs, necks and beaks, and very small bodies, as well as relatively short wings. Scientists believe that they did not hunt on the wing, but rather walked on the ground hunting for any animal they could catch and swallow whole, that included dog-sized, perhaps even man-sized creatures. Standing on all fours, the largest Asdarkids were as tall as a modern-day giraffe, and almost as tall as a T-Rex. Pulmonoscorpius. This is by far the smallest creature of the list, 
but it would still cause hysteria and perhaps even some heart attacks if it showed up today. It was very similar to today's scorpions but could grow up to one meter long, perhaps more, and was armed with sharp keely, claws, and a venomous stinger. Of course, we don't know how toxic its venom was, but considering the considerable amount it injected with each attack, it was most likely a very deadly critter indeed. A predator, Pulmonoscorpius roamed the swampy forests of the Carboniferous in what is today Scotland. Just so you know, during the Carboniferous there were also giant roaches the size of house cats, dragonflies the size of hawks, and centipede relatives up to three meters long. No kidding. Megalodon. This is a fairly well-known prehistoric monster, but it is just so big and scary that it deserves to be in this list. Megalodon, technically called a Carcarocles megalodon, was a gigantic shark closely related to today's makos and great whites. It could grow up to 20 meters long and weigh up to 60 tons, being almost six times larger than Tyrannosaurus rex. Obviously, the only thing in the sea big enough to feed megalodon were whales, and indeed, the giant shark's bite marks have been found in the fossil remains of whales all around the world. Although many people like to imagine encounters between megalodon and T-Rex, or dinosaur-like marine reptiles, the truth is megalodon appeared long after the extinction of such creatures. And it wasn't seen alive by any humans either, although it was still roaming the oceans when our Australopithecine relatives took their first steps out of the jungle. Spinosaurus when Jurassic Park 3 was released in 2001, many people complained that the beloved lawyer-eating T-Rex had been replaced with a demade-up dinosaur. In reality, Spinosaurus did exist, and it was indeed bigger than T-Rex. The remains of this enormous predator were found in Egypt in 1915, and the paleontologist who studied them was already convinced that it was bigger than T-Rex. However, this couldn't be proved as the fossils were sadly destroyed in a bombing during World War II. Recently, however, new fossils have been found, and Spinosaurus was finally declared to be the largest carnivorous dinosaur of all times. This beastie could grow up to 17 or 18 meters long, weigh up to 10 tons and had a sail on its back taller than an adult man. Its long, crocodile-like snout suggests that it spent a long time in the water and possibly ate lots of fish, but also crocodiles, giant turtles, and any dinosaur unlucky enough to cross its path. Even though T-Rex will probably always be the most popular prehistoric monster of all times, Spinosaurus is, and remains, the largest predator ever to walk the earth, that we know of. Xenosmalus. Since the formidable Smilodon, better known as saber-toothed tiger, is too well known, we have decided to go for a refreshing change. Enter Xenosmalus possibly the nastiest feline ever to have existed. The remains of this very large cat, the size of a lion or tiger, but more robust, were recently found in Florida along with the remains of many unlucky giant peccaries, similar to wild pigs, that fell prey to it. Instead of strangling prey or breaking their neck as lions do, or stabbing them as the saber-toothed tiger did, Xenosmalus acted more like a shark or a carnivorous dinosaur biting off a huge chunk of flesh and causing massive blood loss and shock in a matter of seconds. Compared to modern-day felids, a Xenosmalus kill would probably be extremely bloody. So much in fact that it would probably not be shown in Animal Planet. Since we don't know when exactly Xenosmalus became extinct, we can't tell if humans ever met this cat or fell prey to it. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.